about how you can start an education revitalization. So the first thing I want to talk to you about today is my friend Joe. Joe has gone through life following the high school teachings. He works hard and he achieves a 4.0 GPO, 1350 on his SAT, and 40 hours of community service. Now, he gets accepted to Santa Barbara. He only has one major problem. He doesn't know what he wants to do for the rest of his life. So Joe decides to go into college anyways. He ends up changing his major two times and spends an extra two and a half years, which equals $83,000. Now, this is not just a one-person problem. This affects a majority of the United States of America. 50% of college students uh, end up going into college undecided, and 70% change their major at least one time, with most changing it three whole times. So today, Shadowist is here to talk to you about starting education revitalization. I'm Dean, the co-CTO and marketer. I'm Dante, the CEO and CTO. I'm Luis, the co-CTO and secretary. Now, the problem, uh, the problem now is that college students are going into a major that they believe is something that they really want, but it ends up turning out as something different. So, therefore, they're wasting so much time and money and effort into a major that they think is one, but it's something else. So, the solution that we have is to pair up a student with a mentor so that they can essentially learn the real hands-on skills that they would need to learn in the job rather than going into the job being unprepared. Now for our customer segment, we are targeting uh, the age group of 15 to 19 year olds, but mainly 11th graders and up. Reason being is because at this age group, this is where they find out what uh, major they want to go into. So we're going to try to connect with them through um, social media, like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Now our competition, we have competitors that have school shadowing programs such as Duncan and Cart. Um, the difference from us though is that we actually focus on personal connections and more hands-on experience of what the, their career would actually be like after they study. For our TAM, SAM, and market share, for our TAM we have 2 million students, our SAM we have 200,000, and our market share we have 20,000. And so these are kind of our early results that show our ability to generate revenue. We have um, our social media campaign that we started. We actually had 15 posts and 50 followers with 26 profile visits. And we were able to increase that to 44 profile visits, 34 posts, and 83 followers. So these are people that actually are interested in our shadowing program. And they want to see um, what it happens. We actually had some issues with getting our website up but we finally were able to get it started on April 25th. And after that, we were able to market and we actually received some pretty good uh, numbers visiting our website, including 107 page views. So our financial projections are uh, labeled in this graph. You can see the green is the net income slash net loss, the white is the gross profit, and the blue is the revenue. So it's going to increase uh, like pretty steadily for the first three years, and then it goes exponentially last year. So our proposed structure is that in exchange for $15,000, ShadowUs is proposing a 5% ownership in our business based off of a post-money evaluation of $300,000. So the way we will be using the money that we hopefully receive would be for marketing primarily, um, our domain, hosting, and then the admin costs. And for our exit strategy, we plan to sell at the end of five years to a strategic buyer. Thank you. Can you guys describe how you're going to make money? So um, the way we're making money is it's a $50 uh, program for two days and the way we're selling it is that $50 more than makes up for the extra two years of college you spend that equals $83,000. So who pays what? that? Uh, the student actually pays that. Okay. So what is it that they get from that? You said two days. Describe a little bit more about what your product is. And like if I was a prospective student, how would you describe what I'm getting? What are, what are, what's the value? So coming to our program, you're actually going to be able to 
get a feel for what's actually, so say you want to be a psychiatrist, you could come to the psychiatrist's office, you could get a feel like how he uses it, he shows you everything, um, the kind of patients, the day-to-day -day he experiences, um, all the different uh, aspects of his job and what you'd have to do, and also the benefits of that. So that way you actually get to see the real life experience of what you'll get. You're not just reading over it or doing the, the textbooks on it. You're actually getting a real life view and that shows you like, is this something I, I'm interested, something I can see myself doing every day? Or is this something that maybe I should do something similar but not quite the same thing? So you're, just, you're connecting students with possible mentors that, and then giving them time with that mentor? Yes. Okay. So it's like a paid job shadow. So how do you acquire mentors? What do they get out of? So the mentors can have two options. We can either help them go uh, work out like an internship, so like afterwards uh, they can use the skills they, acquired, they saw in the job shouting. They can choose to, if they're interested, to build it and do an internship for them or to help pay for it. Or they could also, um, or they could also, <laughs> Sorry, one second. Well, I didn't quite follow you, sorry. What, you kept using they, so I wasn't sure who the they was, uh, the mentor or the student? So the student can either go undergo an internship under the mentor after the program, so that way they can, uh, so that way the student can be able to uh, actually utilize and build upon the skills necessary for the job. Or they could also, um, the, the mentor, we could work with the mentor and we figure out a nice uh, price plan. So like $50 is like the recommended, but it's going to be similar to Amazon and how they have different prices considering on the major. So uh, a doctor might be more than a teacher, but um, the, like 50 is going to be like the recommended. And so they get like a portion of the profit. Well, I'm still not clear how you're going to convince uh, an accountant or a psychiatrist to have you been your I mean, a psychiatrist is a really bad example because there's patient-doctor confidentiality that would be a big, bit of an issue, I think. Uh, but if you're going to shadow even an accountant, how is you know, they, it's a big distraction to have somebody you're trying to teach them. I'm not sure how you're going to get a CPA to commit to having somebody in their office for two days. So these are going to be people that want to give back and to, and to like help the community, help the younger ones. Um, in our experience, we found a lot of professionals that wanted to actually help the younger generations. They want someone they can like pass their knowledge on to, so they want to kind of like foster these students' growth and help them. Achieve. I, I think that's true. A lot of people would like to help the community. What data do you have from the, the survey of professionals or anything you can share with us as to why this is realistic? Um, the hospital has a program right now where they, they help um, they actually have kind of something sort of similar, where the hospital takes students and they show them the ropes and they, they kind of follow the doctors around and the doctors, uh, I, we had, uh, we knew several, we surveyed several people that had been part of that program and they said that the doctors were pretty um, warm or the doctors didn't really have too much problem since it was only for, you know, not, it's not like a whole week or a month, it was only two days. But I it kind of, Dovetailing off of that, so I'd be interested to find out like how many welders there are in Fresno, and then what percentage of those welders actually would be willing to have students come and sit with them, because you have you're potentially looking at every Fresno Unified junior that might possibly be wanting to do that. What if a large percentage of them want to be welders? These welders could be inundated with with requests for for internships. Um, I, I would like to see that research. I would like to see that you guys have gone through and, and, and actually talked to more than just, you know, hospital. The hospital, they're all about community outreach, right? So of course they're going to factor in a percentage of time for their doctors to be able to do stuff like this. It's part of, if you're going to be a nurse or going to be a doctor, that's part of what you do is you you know, you go and you, you intern and you, you work with other doctors and nurses. And, and so that, that, that's a best case scenario. But what about, you know, an accountant? If I'm, if I'm, if I'm the owner of an accountancy, I, you know, my, my CPA is going to have to be distracted by this person. I, I would like to know how many of these folks, what percentage of these folks are willing to be able to, to do that and to know that like hard numbers, like 
these people have generally have, have committed to being part of, of the program as well. Okay. Yeah, we don't have that currently, but that is something we'll be sure to do after this. Um, what about liability? Is this you're dealing with uh, minors? So are you going to have the individuals who are mentors fingerprinted because you're going to have them make some kind of buzzed the students? Um, are they fingerprinted? Who's transporting the kids to the facility? I mean, about those things. Uh, part of our um, startup cost was actually a lawyer consult. So like going to a lawyer and figuring and working out all of those legal issues because they are minors, so we're going to have a lot of obstacles with that. How are you Oh, sorry. How are you going you know, to bet the businesses who want to be involved? Uh, to make sure that they're, they, their facilities are safe for students and make sure that they're, what they're going to show them is appropriate. And, and that is the most you. likely option, but um, again, we have to, we can't uh, say for sure, so we actually still have to do the lawyer consult. Yeah, because I think if you're, if, 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 I don't know if it's, if it's not something that the district is doing, this might not be applicable, but I know that if it's something that's related to the school, that that person has to go through like a background check and, and have clearance before they can work with with high school students. I know your age group goes up to nineteen, so you know once they hit eighteen, that's not that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Do you what what is your cost of business? I know we have startup costs, but what is what is your cost of business projection? Do you have anything? The cost of business projection. Did I miss that sign? Fifteen thousand was the investment to the investment. Yeah, I think that that's the one I want to look at. That back, the one with the the, the chart. Yeah, so $100,000 in revenue in year one would require 2,000 people. Does that number sound realistic to you? Um, to us, yes, once we had all the startup costs and the marketing and the flyers and brochures that we wanted to do. And um, we also planned on Google AdWords campaign and a radio campaign as well. I can imagine kids wanting, but the mentor side, I think, finding 2,000 mentors. Sounds really difficult, don't you think? And your market share, wh where are you pulling these students from? Are these just Fresno Unified Juniors? Or are these Fresno Clovis Sanger Juniors? Because there's about 7,000 high school students. Yeah, we were high pulling high primarily from like the Central Valley, so it would be all around. But with the market segment, we said around 20,000, but we we're probably going to drop it because like, yeah, there's the whole valley, but we were assuming that not everybody would want to participate in it. So. Well, you mentioned your target is only 11th uh, grade and on, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's going to shrink it even more. Yeah, so it was like um, the central California, and so like that whole chunk. I mean, high school students are uh, the first one unified? Six to seven thousand. First class? Must be no. We have 35,000 students. Oh, yeah. I think you guys have a really good idea. Um, I went to Fresno State, and I'm one of those people that definitely changed my major a few times. But part of the reason I did that is I did like four different internships, and I started early in my college career. And I tried things that I thought I would love, but when I tried them, I hated it. And I'll give you an example. I wanted to do athletic training. Sounds great. You're training athletes. It's going to be fun. You're working with college students. It was fun, right? Well, I did an internship at the high school, and it wasn't fun because I had to tape Stinky Boy's feet. I was at games every night, and I was like, uh, this isn't what I had in mind. I had in mind training like college and athletes that were more, you know, like prestigious. So it's like when I tried it, the reality is, is I was like, ooh. So I think when you actually try things, and the challenge I found was that I really didn't have a job. I worked at a couple restaurants in high school, so I didn't try anything. I didn't know. So I think that's the challenge is that you haven't ever tried anything. So I think one of the things that might be helpful to you guys, I think the mentor is a great idea because I think we all have an idea at this age. You already have an idea of what you think you want to do, right? Yes. So if you actually were able to go do an internship and spend time with some people or in that hospital or if it was 
a law firm or whatever that was, if it was a welder or an air conditioning company, well then you would get a good idea if you could see yourself doing that every day, what would it take for you to accomplish that? And sometimes that path could be college, sometimes like how they have the new career, techno, career technical school that's opening. Hey, if I really wanted to be a welder or someone that worked with my hands, an auto mechanic, and I already know that I like that, that would be the perfect thing so by the time you finished high school, you would already be on your way to having a career that pays you and knowing that you like doing something. So I think you're onto something, but if you guys maybe had different seminars or maybe tests that kind of help students decide what their aptitudes are leaning towards. I just think that we don't know what we want. We have, everybody has dreams, but I think it's a great idea and I think the mentorship is a good idea. And I think what you, I think we're underestimating, more people want to be involved, they're not asked. And so like there's a social media platform that went viral where they were looking for um, men to come to a kid's luncheon for kids that didn't have a dad. And they said like two or three hundred people showed up because they were like, hey, I don't want these kids to not have a dad at the luncheon. So people did show up. So I think if the word went out there and we said, hey, we have a need, people would volunteer. So I think if you could figure out how to get more volunteers, because people do want to help. But you, you have to organize it a little bit better and maybe in the beginning you might have to limit it to categories because you wouldn't be able to focus on every type of industry. Yes. Um, so thinking about normal college age students, what is it that everybody wants to do? You know, some kids want to be a professional gamer, some kids want to know they want to be an attorney or a veterinarian. Great, right, if they could actually spend time, like Valley Children's Hospital has programs where students can volunteer. And I think if you volunteer, then you realize whether you like it or not. But I think you're onto a good idea, but maybe the two-day seminars could be focused on exposing them to a variety of careers because they really don't know what they want to do yet. I think Michelle's got a good idea about a potential pivot for your business, that you could do it instead of one-on-one, -on -one, you could do this maybe getting a, a, an accountant to come and talk to a group of people and charge them entrance to come. And by doing so, you you could make it at least you know, reasonable as far as trying to acquire the mentors to come speak and talk. You know, go to go to this seminar and spend six hours or something during the day, and they would go through all of their day, what they do in their day and how their day works and their, that, that kind of thing. I had a class at Fresno State. It was like a bad first day, and everybody had to take it if you wanted to be in education. And they set up these scenarios across campus and you had to run and try to save these people or whatever. Um, but it was a very hands-on thing. And it also showed me though, because it was really bloody, that I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, even just the simulation of something sometimes makes you realize. And they also showed us the guy that came was the guy that took the pictures like there was a fatal car accident. Well, he showed us the pictures of that. And I felt really sad afterwards. Like, I don't want to be a first responder. Like, I don't, it's sad to me that these people were, but you don't know that. You have no idea until you do something. Like, some kids have no problem with blood. Or, the, hey, I want to be that person that's a first responder, and I want to know that I've done my best. But you just don't know things until you try things, you know. But you could simulate, bring in, like, speakers and simulate activities that would give students an idea of whether they like something or not. I agree, it's a good idea. It just needs to make a little more. Yeah, yeah. And, and better articulate what that $50 is going to get the student besides the experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do things like that for the district now for free, and it's hard to get students to do it. Yeah. So to add a cost to it, make sure that that's, that's going to be like what for them that you're going to get. Hands on experience, you're going to get a lunch provided, you're going to get just better articulate where that money's going to go. So they can, so because the customer is the student, so it's a business, and you need to better articulate what that investment for them is going to be, not just what, what you're doing for us, but what they're going to get for it. Okay. Back to the game. Well, thank you guys for all your input. You. We're going to um, definitely like uh, consider some things and see if we need to pivot and uh, yeah, try to implement your suggestions. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.